First game of the season as the Eisenhower Eagles travel to Wayne State University for the prep kickoff classic to face the number two ranked Oak Park Knights. Duan Mathis looking to strike deep, but broken up by Steven Nadalski. Future Buckeye, Duan Mathis. Completion to Clifford Green, and they're in Eisenhower territory. Jeremiah Blanks for the Oak Park Knights. Gets the corner, finally being pushed out at the five yard line of Ike. And Dewan Mathis with the keeper in from five yards out. The extra point was no good, and Oak Park led six to nothing. Caleb Oyster for the Eisenhower Eagles. Almost brings this one to the house, but a, sh but a shoestring tackle by Oak Park. And the Eisenhower Eagles got a healthy dose of Jeremiah Blanks. Down to the 25 yard line of Ike. Dewan Mathis looking under pressure, escapes to his right and heaves this one skyward. Jump ball and Oak Park comes down with it. Touchdown. Botched handoff between Dewan Mathis and Jeremiah Blanks. Puts the ball on the ground. Eisenhower. Eisenhower recovers. Eisenhower finally getting on the board. Blake Rastecue, long pass to Caleb Oyster, and he spins out of an arm tackle into the end zone for six points. Blake Rastecue and Caleb Oyster making things happen again. This time a screen pass. And Oyster is gone, bringing us to our halftime score, Oak Park Knights 19. Eisenhower Eagles, 13. Nice pitch and catch from Blake Rasicu. Connecting with Nathan Pettypool. Still driving, Alexander Jarvis with a nice reception here. But that drive would stall out and Oak Park would take over. Oak Park's Jeremiah Blanks cutting his way through defenders. And off to the races, he's gone. For another six points. Sophomore Jeremiah Blanks. Finally brought down at the one yard line. Setting up this quarterback keeper with eight minutes left in the game. The two point conversion was no good. And Oak Park led 31 to 13. One last chance for Eisenhower to score. But Caleb Oyster is brought down at the two, bringing us to our final score. Oak Park Knights 31, Eisenhower Eagles 13. The Eagles came out flying against the Cousino Patriots in week two of the high school football season. To start the game, Blake Rastigue connected with Ian Kennelly on the opening drive for a touchdown. Ike led seven to nothing. Stick, stick, stick. The Patriots got the ball but soon dropped it and the Eagles' Caleb Oyster manages to hunt it down and work farther into Cousin Oak territory. And it looked like Rastecue would add six to Ike's early lead, but the TD was called back due to a penalty. The next play, Rastecue was pressured and he looked for Nathan Pettypool. But the Patriots would intercept it and get out to the 11 yard line. But the Patriots were soon forced to punt and Steven Nadelski took full advantage. Working off some great blocking, Steven finds his open field and scurries 45 yards for the return and Ike was up 14 to nothing. On their next drive, the Eagles' Ian Kennelly gets some big yards with this catch and run down to the Patriot 27-yard line. Senior running back Jacob Oyster would finish the drive, dragging tacklers into the end zone for another Eagle touchdown. He would also kick the extra point, and Ike led 21 to nothing, with 6.32 left in the first quarter. When the Eagles' offense wasn't chewing up yardage in Patriot defenders, the Eagle defense was solid. 
swarming ball carriers like a pack of wolves hungry for their next meal. On the first play of their next drive, the Eagles tried to keep it simple, which they did. One play, Rastikew, to a streaking Alexander Jarvis. A little over 50 yards and Ike was up 28 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. In the second quarter, the Eagles' Caleb Oyster finishes up Eisenhower's first drive. He smashes his way in from the one yard for a touchdown to put the Eagles up 35 to nothing. Again, the Cousineau offense was met by a stingy Ike defense. Luke Devereux and Justin Tretzky headline this tackle for a loss. Later, Justin would be rewarded with a fumble recovery to end a very active Patriot drive. That led to another big connection between Rastigu and Nadolski, down to the Cousineau 15. Caleb Oyster again finishes the drive for the Eagles, spinning and banging 15 yards for another Eagle touchdown. That made it 42 to nothing Ike, with 3.14 left in the second quarter. After another stalled drive and short putt by Cousino, Blake Rastigue would end up keeping it and running it in himself to add to Ike's lead. 49 to nothing at the end of the first half. In the third quarter, the Eagles go with Braden Van Gilder at quarterback and he would pitch to Jacob Smith, who would work his way down to the four-yard line. Smith would get the call on the next play where he squeezes his way into the end zone for the touchdown. That put Eisenhower up 55 to nothing. Later in the game, Michael Bush rattles off 50 yards for another Eagle touchdown, and Eisenhower led 61 to nothing. Late in the fourth quarter, Braden Van Gilder would cap off the Eagles onslaught with a 10-yard quarterback keeper. That ended the scoring and the game as the Eisenhower Eagles traveled to Warren and embarrassed the Patriots 67 to nothing. The Eisenhower Eagles have their first home game of the season against Mac Red Division foe Chippewa Valley. Chippewa Valley up 7-0 in the first quarter and quarterback Blake Rastigy with a keeper, tying the game up at 7 apiece. Second quarter, Big Red's quarterback Tommy Schuster throws a perfect pass to Daniel Stout to give them back the lead. But Ike answers right back with a bomb from Rastigy to Ian Kennelly and he is gone, tying the game back up 14-14. Tommy Schuster with the keeper looking to score, but he fumbles at the one yard line and Ike recovers. But the Big Reds would get possession back within a few plays, setting up this six yard touchdown run by David Ellis. Check out this crazy play by the Eagles offense. Rastikiu with the first down pass to Massimo de Aristotle. He breaks a tackle and the ball is stripped, but de Aristotle falls right back on it. And it would set up a field goal to make it 24 to 17 Chippewa Valley. But the craziness continues on the ensuing kickoff. David Ellis of the Big Red shows off his speed and he would not be denied as he returns this one for 89 yards and the touchdown. The Eagles not giving up just yet as Rescue scores his second rushing touchdown of the game. But ultimately the Big Reds would take this one with a final score of 45-24. Eisenhower looks to bounce back next week as they take on the 2-1 Romeo Bulldogs at Runkle Field. Are you interested in taking care of a reptile or amphibian at home, but not sure how to take care of them? Why not adopt one at our Burgess Shedbush Nature Center? One-year adoptions are $25 for a small animal and $50 for a large animal. You'll get an adoption certificate and the adoption fee will help cover vet care and expenses for your animal. You're encouraged to come in regularly to take care of your animal. For more information, you can call the Burgess Shadbush Nature Center at 586-323-2478 or contact them at naturecenter at shelbytwp.org.
You can visit the Nature Center yourself at 4101 Riverbends Drive, off of the Ryan Road entrance of Riverbends Park. In the 31st meeting on the gridiron of two longtime rivals, the 2-1 Bulldogs hosted the 1-2 Eagles in a Mac Red matchup at Barnabu Field. Early Blake Rastigu and Ian Kennelly look for the quick strike, but the Bulldogs have it covered. A couple of plays later and Rastigu tries again. This time it's laid out perfectly for Kennelly. And Ike takes the early lead at Romeo, 7-0. The rest of the first quarter saw each team fighting for yardage. And punishing the ball carriers with each opportunity. Late in the second quarter, the Eagles lost the ball on an interception, which gave Romeo great field position. And Went would get the call at the goal line, and Romeo ties it 7-7. Late in the first half, the defenses made it so neither team could put more points on the board, as the half ended 7-7. In the second half, the Eagles Massimo de Aristotle and the Eagles get deep into Bulldog territory. But Ryan Humbuck would end the Eagles drive with an interception in the end zone. On defense, Ike's James Collin makes a great stop on running back Ryan Chapsky. Then Colleen Duda to catch Horn in the backfield. But Horn and the Bulldogs would eventually reach pay dirt, and Romeo took a 14 7 lead. Despite a nice catch and run by Nathan Pettipool, the Eagles were forced to punt. But due to a slip up receiving it, the Eagles come up with the ball. Caleb Oyster in the Eagle offense would end up scoring another touchdown, making it 14 to 14. There the stage was set for Brock Horn. 55 yards and the Bulldogs were back up, 21 to 14. The Eagles put together their last drive in the face of some tough Bulldog defense. In a last effort, a scrambling Rastigu spots Deer Estadle in the end zone. But what looks like a no-brainer call for defensive pass interference is not called. But there was a penalty on the play holding on the offense, and Romeo gets the ball and the victory over the Eagles, 21 to 14. Eisenhower faces a familiar foe in the Stevenson Titans on homecoming. Early in the first quarter, Rescue hands it off to Caleb Oyster to go 20 yards to give Ike the early lead, but the extra point would be no good. In the second quarter, Rescue finds Alexander Jarvis, who goes 38 yards down the sideline for the touchdown, making it 13 to nothing. Later on, Rescue hands it to Oyster again as he scores his second touchdown of the night. But spoiler alert, it wouldn't be his last. 
Stevenson gets a chance on fourth and three as Justin McCown finds Brandon Shemansky, but his foot would be just out of bounds. In the second half, Caleb Oyster makes a nice run to the 15-yard line in Stevenson territory. But then Rastigu gets the ball knocked out of his hands and Stevenson would recover it. But McCown would throw an interception to Anthony Cardamone. And that sets up yet another touchdown by Caleb Oyster. Still in the third quarter, Stevenson would get on the board as McCown easily finds Hans Wisniewski in the end zone. But the extra point was no good. In the fourth quarter, Stevenson looks to score again, but James Collins easily intercepts the pass. On the ensuing play, Rastigi with the option to Oyster. He finds a seam, and no one would catch him as he goes 85 yards for his fourth touchdown of the night. And Eisenhower would win by a score of 33-6, improving their record to 2-3. They face the 4-1 Lance Cruz North Crusaders at home this Friday. The Eagles welcomed the Crusaders of Lance Cruz North at a rainy Swinehart Field, and they wouldn't let this pregame mishap define their night. In the first quarter, the Eagles get good field position after some penalties, and Nathan Pettypool will take this down the sideline into the end zone. Justin Schumanski of the Crusaders throws a great pass to Colin Taylor Johnson and takes it all the way to the 15-yard line. Schumanski looks to pass again. It's tipped by a few players and into the hands of Ian Kennelly for a pick. Second quarter, Rescue back to pass and grabbed by Massimo Di Aristotle, who takes it all the way to the five yard line. Setting up a five yard run by Caleb Oyster, who just breaks the plane of the goal line. Ike's strong defense gives the ball back to the offense, and Di Aristotle outruns every defender in sight and takes it to the house. Ike would end the half with a field goal, putting them up 24 to nothing. The rain eases up in the second half, but Ike doesn't ease up on LCN as Oyster scores his second touchdown to give them a 31 point lead. Into the fourth quarter with LCN in the red zone, and Schumanski's pass is picked off by De Aristotle. Dodging defenders. And yes, he would take it over 100 yards into the opposite end zone. But Ike wouldn't maintain the shutout as Schumanski finds Jeremiah Williams Stewart to put the Crusaders on the board, and they would complete a two point conversion. Braden Van Gilder gets a look at QB as he hands it off to Ben Martignan as he scores for good measure. LCN would score again late, but Ike comes away with a dominant victory by a score of 45 to 14. The Eagles go on the road to Anchor Bay this Friday to play the Tars as they continue their hunt for a playoff spot. Eisenhower travels to Fairhaven to take on the Anchor Bay Tars. Eisenhower gets started early from nine yards out. Caleb Oyster into the end zone with 6.30 left on the clock. They're leading seven to nothing. Ian Canelli with the quarterback keeper and he's off to the races. Nobody's gonna catch him. That would put Ike up in the first quarter, 14 to nothing. Moving to the second. The Tars pin deep. Nico Pirelli back to pass. Into the hands of Joey Plotsky, and he's down near midfield. Quarterback keeper Nico Pirelli down to the 15 yard line of Eisenhower. Then Pirelli to his tight end Adam Ward, and they're at the eight. Setting up this Nico Pirelli. Eisenhower looks like they got him stopped, but no, he squeezes out and into the end zone for the Anchor Bay Tars' first score of the game with 11.50 left in the second quarter. And Nico Pirelli wasn't done after that. Avoid some Eisenhower defenders. And he is gone. The extra point will be blocked 
and they would still trail 14 to 13. Read option for Ian Canelli, and he just takes it down to the four of Anchor Bay. And he's the one that hits pay dirt with 616 left in the half. Ian Canelli through the scrum of bodies to put the Eagles up 21 to 13. And the Eagles would tack on another. Ian Canelli screen pass to Nathan Pettypool, which would put them up at the half 28 to 13. Ian Canelli getting it done through the air as well with this 26-yard touchdown pass to Alexander Jarvis. Later on in the third quarter, Caleb Oyster gets right to the doorstep. Setting up this one-yard touchdown run by Caleb Oyster. It was his second touchdown on the night. And Eisenhower working hard on the defensive end as well. Massimo Di Aristotle with a pick here. And that will bring us to our final score. Eisenhower Eagles 42, Anchor Bay Tars 13. 15 years and Esplendido Mexican Restaurant is still known for its great tasting quality food. Their secret? Combining the classic taste of Jimmy's Pizza and the well-loved menu from the original Poncho's Restaurant. There's daily food and drink specials and weekday happy hours. Also, stop in for Taco Tuesday or on Sunday when kids eat free. Dine in or carry out. That's Esplendido Mexican Cuisine off Mound Road in Shelby Township. Call 586-739-1070. Eisenhower and Dakota face off in the highly anticipated Mac Red Division rivalry matchup. It was Ian Canelli at quarterback and he did not disappoint as he would take this himself for 45 yards to the end zone to give the Eagles first blood. Dakota senior quarterback Mark Toko back to pass, but it's picked off by Steven Nadalski. Ike looks to take advantage, and Canelli works his magic again, this time finding a hole and running for 73 yards to the house, giving Ike the two-score advantage. On the ensuing kickoff, Dejavion Stepney takes this return all the way to the 45-yard line in Ike territory. Dakota would take it to the red zone where Toko dives over the goal line to put the Cougars on the board. The Cougars back at it again and this time Mark Toko throws a 45-yard bomb to Brandon Michalak. Setting up a run by Jack Murray who punches it in for six points. The extra point was missed, making it a one point lead for the Eagles going into halftime. Back at it in the third quarter and Ian Canelli just makes it look easy and he's off to the races for 66 yards to extend the Eagles lead. With the game winding down, Mark Toko looks to tie the game up, but Canelli denies the pass. A great game for him and the Eagles as they defeat Dakota 21 to 13. Eisenhower travels to Runkle Field to take on four. Their playoff hopes on the line. If they win, they're in. Caleb Oyster was not going to be denied tonight. Fighting his way through two defenders, then juking out two others. Into the end zone at the 10-34 mark of the first quarter to make it 7-0, Eisenhower. And Eisenhower getting it done on the defensive end. Steven Nadalski with this interception. And just into the second quarter, 11.52 left. Blake Rastecue to Ian Canelli, quarterback to quarterback. Touchdown. Ian Canelli, option left. Pitches out to Caleb Oyster. And he's off to the races, finally being pushed out at the 18-yard line of four. And Blake Rastecue with his second touchdown pass. This time to Alexander Jarvis. And here with his second interception on the night, Steven Nadolski almost taking it to the house. Setting up this, Caleb Oyster effortlessly walking into the end zone. 
Ian Canelli back to pass. Completes to Alexander Jarvis, but squeaks out of his hands. He finally recovers his own fumble at the seven yard line of four. Setting up a quarterback keeper for Ian Canelli to put them up at the half, 35 to zero. Four trying to get something going in the second half. Chance Kirkwood brushes off an Eisenhower defender. Finally being brought down in Eisenhower territory. I got a ball, I got a ball, I got a ball. Setting up this four yard touchdown run by Hunter Osantowski. Eisenhower was still up 35 to seven. Later on in the second half, Braden Van Gilder bombs this one to Michael Bush. And Michael Bush punches this one in for a touchdown. They're up 42 to seven. Henry Ford finally getting something going. Chance Kirkwood through the air to Tavon Thompson. Their two point conversion was no good. And they still trailed 42 to 13. Waning seconds of the game. A misplayed snap gets Ford the ball on the one yard line. And Chance Kirkwood would back in for their final points. But that wasn't quite enough. Final score, Eisenhower Eagles 42. Henry Ford Falcons, 19. First round of the MHSAA playoffs as the Eisenhower Eagles travel to the Chippewa Valley to take on the Big Reds. Opening kickoff, short kick for Ike, and it's a live ball. Colin James recovers, and the Eagles take over. Ian Canelli, quarterback keeper, all the way down to the 12-yard line of Chippewa Valley. And finishing the drive, Canelli again up the middle for a four-yard touchdown run. But the Eagles up seven to nothing. Now the Big Reds driving on the doorstep. Tommy Schuster diving for the end zone. And the ball comes loose. It looks like Ike's got it. But no, he's down at the one-yard line. Very next play, Andre Cheneau busting through some arm tackles into the end zone with 5.04 left, tying it up at seven apiece. Moving to the second quarter, Chippewa Valley on the four yard line of Eisenhower and David Ellis walks in for the touchdown. Put them up 14 to seven. Tommy Schuster back to pass, but sacked by Anthony Cardamon and Dalton DeWicki. And it's a fumble, Eisenhower recovers. Ian Canelli getting pressured in the pocket, runs right and throws across his body. But picked off by Corey Anderson. Schuster, screen pass to Andre Cheneau. Just bullying his way through defenders. Now in the Eisenhower red zone, Schuster back to pass looking, can't find anyone. And off to the races, finally brought down at the two yard line. And with 2.1 seconds left in the half, Andre Cheneau with his second touchdown. To put him up 21 to seven. Start of the second half, Ian Canelli back to pass. Bobs it to Massimo Di Aristotle. Finally brought down at the 36 of Chippewa Valley. Eisenhower going for pay dirt. Ian Canelli, but right through the outstretched hands of Nathan Pettypool. That drive would stall out and Chippewa Valley would take over. But nobody could stop Andre Cheneau. Diving for the end zone, down at the one yard line. Very next play, Andre Cheneau in for his third. He's got a hat trick of touchdown. The extra point was no good, and they led 27 to seven. And the final nail in the coffin, Andre Cheneau with a 48 yard touchdown rumble. Bring us to our final score, Chippewa Valley Big Reds 34, Eisenhower Eagles seven.